The ecosystems of Africa and South America are very competitive, but of course they have quite a few differences. Despite this, there are animals in both continents that seem to fulfil the same roles in their respective ecosystems. As each continent has large semi-aquatic mammals, large flightless birds, reptilian apex predators and of course big cats. In today's video, I will be taking a look at the animals in both continents and I will be estimating which African animals could survive in South America and even take over. The first animal we will be taking a look at is an infamous avian predator and it's known for its harrowing appearance. The shoebill is a large, long-legged wading bird and it's native to the freshwater swamps of Central Africa. In its natural habitat, it's an efficient predator and its wide bill allows it to target a wide range of creatures. Shoebills primarily feed on fish, with lungfish, bishes, and catfish making up the majority of their diet. Like many other birds, they're not known for being picky and they will also target most small vertebrates that they can fit into their mouths. The shoebill reaches a maximum height of around 1.5 meters and its long legs are perfectly adapted to swampy wetlands. They allow them to easily stride through deep waters without causing a disturbance, and they also allow them to spot prey from a distance. Unfortunately for the shoebills, their lives aren't always carefree as they do have to look out for predators such as Nile crocodiles. These reptiles are one of their main predators but of course like most other wild animals they are affected by human related factors too. Personally, I believe that the shoebill would be able to survive and maybe even thrive in South America and the Pantanal would be a great destination for them. The Pantanal is one of the largest natural wetland areas in the world and it's located in parts of Brazil, Paraguay and Bolivia. It's home to many of South America's most iconic creatures and there are plenty of animals for the shoebill to feed on. Famously, South America has a large amount of distinctive freshwater fish and many of these fish can be found in the Pantanal. Shoebills mostly focus on slower moving fish and thankfully there are many of these creatures in this area. There are slower moving catfish and there's even a South American lungfish which isn't too dissimilar from the fish it would hunt across its native range. It could be in for a nasty shock if it tried to feed on electric eels but fortunately these animals aren't common across the Pantanal. Across their native range they also feed on young crocodiles and this means that they would be able to take advantage of the abundance of young caiman. Because the shoebill is so large it could easily outcompete other wetland birds in South America but its main problem would be land and aquatic predators. Larger caiman would happily feed on these birds but it's used to dealing with similar larger predators across its native range. The biggest problem could come in the form of the jaguar as these big cats are very different to the cats in Africa. The jaguar is a very adaptable big cat and it's a master of stealth. It's more than happy to enter the water in search of food and it preys on a wide range of different creatures. There aren't many cats in Africa that actively hunt in the water so this would be a new threat for them to deal with. Jaguars are known to successfully target large birds in the wild so this could be a problem for the shoebill but we will never know for certain. We will likely never know if the shoebill would be able to survive in South America but it's interesting to imagine the outcome. The mountain gorilla is a subspecies of the eastern gorilla and it's native to the cloud forests of Central Africa. These primates are highly social and they live in strong cohesive groups guarded by very large silverbacks. 61% of mountain gorilla groups contain one male and 36% of groups contain more than one adult male. The remaining 3% are exclusively male groups or lone males without any partners. These groups help to keep them safe from predators as the adult males are formidable animals and few predators will mess with them. The mountain gorilla is primarily a herbivore and the vast majority of its diet is made up of shoots and stems. They feed on over 140 different plant species and they will even feed on roots, bark and flowers. The African leopard is the mountain gorilla's only natural predator but even these predators will think twice before attacking. An adult gorilla could easily kill a leopard so usually leopards will only attack healthy gorillas if they are desperate or they have mastered their gorilla hunting technique. Natural predators aren't the mountain gorilla's main threat as these animals are fighting a losing battle against humans. Mountain gorillas are negatively affected by poaching, habitat loss and human conflict and this has led to them being listed as endangered. 
These primates would do a lot better in areas with fewer humans and the Amazon rainforest is definitely one of these areas. The Amazon represents over half of the Earth's remaining rainforests and there are many areas that are untouched by man. There are even some remote tribes that are uncontacted and this is increasingly rare in the modern day. The mountain gorilla would be able to thrive here without being affected by any human related threats, but it's still unclear if they would have enough to eat. The fruits and plants in Africa are very different to the fruits and plants in South America but I still believe that the mountain gorilla could adapt. There are plenty of fruits and edible plants in the Amazon and as the mountain gorilla feeds on such a wide variety of plants it should be able to adapt. Quite a few primate species call the Amazon rainforest home so this proves that the rainforest can support similar creatures. Once again, the main problem would be the jaguar, but it's impossible to know if this big cat would target them. Jaguars rarely attack humans, so it's possible that they would avoid targeting gorillas. But once again, this will probably remain a mystery. The Nile Monitor is a large member of the Monitor family and it's native to the Nile and the majority of Sub-Saharan Africa. This animal varies greatly in size and colour across its range and one subspecies is commonly considered to be a separate species. Nile monitors can be found in a variety of habitats but they are mostly found near areas of fresh water. These reptiles reach a maximum length of around 2.5 metres and a max weight of around 20 kilograms and even though this is impressive, they are far from safe in Africa. They are targeted by crocodiles, pythons, leopards and eagles but they do get their revenge on some of these animals. Nile monitors feed on a wide variety of animals from turtles, snakes and lizards to poisonous toads and birds. They even feed on the infamous Nile crocodile and they do so by targeting their young and their eggs. By digging up reptile nests they can have a massive effect on their numbers and they have already invaded North America. Nile monitors have a small invasive population in Florida and they got here through the pet trade. They are known to have a negative effect on native alligator, turtle and American crocodile numbers by feeding on their young and their eggs. It is possible that they could have a similar impact in South America and this would be very bad news for the native reptiles. I believe that the Nile monitor would be able to survive in quite a few areas along the Amazon River but they would have some competition. The Nile monitors could take advantage of the abundance of young caiman but there's another semi-aquatic predator that could cause them problems. The giant otter is known for being very territorial and it doesn't tolerate large reptiles in its area. Giant otters have been known to chase and even kill caiman that cross their paths so it's possible that they would have the same reaction to the Nile monitor. It's possible that they could avoid the giant otters or even thrive in areas where they are rare but once again this is another very interesting mystery. There are plenty of other animals that could have made it into this video and one other obvious example is the hippo. Famously this animal is already thriving in South America but as I've been through its story so many times on the channel before I decided to leave it out of this video. If you think you know of any others then let me know down in the comments below but for now thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.